Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Naomi for those of you guys who do not know and I'm excited because we're on the podcast today. Wow, it feels pretty weird saying that. This episode is actually going to be posted on my YouTube channel, but you can also find the audio on the In The Realms podcast. For those of you guys who know, you know. The In The Realms podcast is a podcast that I host where I love to uplift, inspire, and set people ablaze to do what God has called them to do. And so today I have a quick little word for y'all. But before we get into that, we are starting off with a prayer because we need to just place this into the hands of the Lord, as always, okay? Father God, I just want to give you thanks for this moment. I want to give you thanks for this podcast. I want to give you thanks for whoever is listening to this right now, Lord. May they hear this, may they be blessed, may they be inspired, and may they be set ablaze to do what you have called them to do, O oh God. Father God, may this podcast reach the right ears at the right time, and may it be an on-time word in Jesus' name. Okay, so I'm going to get right into it. We are entering that time of year where we start to question the plans or the promises of God on our lives. Maybe it doesn't apply to everybody, but I find that most of us, last year, 2023, December, we were feeling it. Like We were like, okay, God you're going to do the exceedingly and abundantly in 2024. You know what, even in January, we probably started certain things and we're like, yeah, this is, this is God. God is all over this. You're seeing results, you're seeing blessings. You're like, this has to be it. February's good, but it gets a bit rocky towards the end of February. But by March, by March, that mustard seed becomes almost non-existent. That faith and that zeal and that hope that we need that's necessary for us to fulfill the promise of God in our lives just starts to dwindle a little bit. And I want to ask somebody, why do we hinder ourselves from entering into the rest of God? Why do we hinder ourselves from entering into the rest of God? And when I'm talking about the rest of God, I'm talking about the peace I'm talking about the promise. I'm talking about the beauty and the splendor that God has for us. That is what the rest of God is. And so I want to read a scripture here for you guys because we love a good NLT. We love a good NKJV. We love the word of God here. Okay. So we're going to get right into the scripture. It says here in Hebrews chapter three, verses 16 to 19. And who was it who rebelled against God? Even though they had heard his voice, wasn't it the people Moses led out of Egypt and who made God angry for 40 years? Wasn't it the people who sinned, whose corpse lay in the wilderness? And to whom was it God was speaking when he took an oath that they would never enter his rest? Wasn't it the people who disobeyed him? So we see that because of their unbelief, they were not able to enter his rest. Because of their unbelief, they were not able to enter into the rest of God. And when we find ourselves operating in unbelief, it's because we lack trust of what God had originally spoken. If you know this story, you know that God had called Moses to set his people free. But he also had a plan and a purpose and an intention and a promised land that was set for them. But yet those people weren't able to enter into the land full of milk and honey because they didn't trust God, because they had unbelief. And what does the word trust mean? The word trust means to have firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of something or someone. So when we lack trust towards our God, we are questioning his ability. We are questioning his ability to perform what he has spoken. But you see, what God has called us to do is not supposed to make any sense. It's not supposed to add up. There's not some crazy mathematical equation that we can follow in order to see the performance, in order to see the manifestation of what he said. You see, when these people were in the wilderness and they were starting to doubt and question what God had said, they had a lot of reason to kind of doubt. I mean, let's be honest here, okay? They had some justifiable reasons. God, you took us out of Egypt and here we are in the wilderness. In the wilderness, there are times where we feel like we're about to die. There are times where we're even questioning because we are in the wilderness. And if you're honest, I mean, let's be honest, it's just you and I. It's just you and I here, okay? If you're honest, 
You've been in a season before. You've been in a wilderness season before where you felt so justified to question the promise of God on your life. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe your circumstances, maybe your environment is a reason to make you question what God has spoken. But do you not know that he is not a man that he should lie? I love this portion of scripture because it's such a reminder of what could happen when we find ourselves in a place where we lack belief in what God has spoken. And I want to remind somebody today that when you find yourself in a position where you're well, you're in a tug of war from what God said in your reality and what you currently are going through, you have to choose life or choose death. God was speaking to the Israelites in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 and he would tell them, choose life or choose death, but he would prefer for them to choose life. Choosing life is choosing the promises, is choosing the word, is choosing the spirit and the presence of God, and choosing death is falling prey to the plans of the enemy. And you might find yourself in a position right now, you might find yourself in a place where you're like, God, um, I'm in a wilderness. What's going on? Are you still, why did you even bother to speak the promise over my life. Why did you even bother to give me a word just to put me in a wilderness? And I wanna tell somebody today that the wilderness is the place where you're actually going to birth the promise or the place where you're gonna drop the seed. The wilderness is the place where you remind yourself of what God has done in previous seasons or it's the place where you throw in the towel. The wilderness is the place where you pick up the talents and the giftings that God has given you and you multiply it or it's the place where you take the talents and you bury it. You bury it. It's really giving parable of the talents. It really is because there's a portion of scripture where Jesus is talking about a parable of talents, okay? And each person was given talents according to their ability. So you have one person given five talents, another person is given two talents, and another person is given one talent. And each person is able to multiply that talent except for the person who was given one talent. And the scripture would tell us that he was not able to multiply his talent because he was afraid. What are you doing in the place of fear? What are you doing? I believe that the people who were able to multiply their talents and multiply what God had given them is because they got their talent in the secret place and they were able to produce their talent in this secret place. But sometimes we find ourselves getting a promise and getting a gifting and getting a word from the Lord in the secret place, but we don't go back to the secret place in order to birth that promise. I'm even reminded of a time quite recently where God was God was God was working on me all right so I host a conference every year and it's called divine influence also known as divcon if you don't know what divcon is I mean where have you been what are you doing? What are you saying, child? I was going into my second year of DivCon in 2023. And so God was telling me it was going to be bigger. It was going to be better. It was going to be like he was giving me the vision. I was in the secret place and he was giving me the vision of what he wanted DivCon to be. But you see, when I started to um, try to manifest this vision and I was doing what I need to do in the natural, I was like, God, these natural numbers are a lot. This budget is a lot. And I was just like, you know what? I don't think it should happen this year. I don't think it should happen because how am I going to make this happen with what I currently have? How am I going to how am I going to see the fruition of this thing that God is calling me to do with what is currently in my hands? And God had to remind me wasn't I the one who put that in your hands in the secret place? So why don't you go back into the place of intimacy with me in order to see where I want to take you, in order to see how I'm going to manifest this thing I just told you. And you see, many times, whenever we find ourselves in the wilderness, we forget about the presence of the Lord. We forget about the presence and we forget about the word and we forget about God in general. 
How is it that he has given us a vision and he has given us something to birth out of us, but yet we try to do it in our own strength? You got the promise in a supernatural way, but you're expecting to manifest the promise in a humanistic way? But to God be the glory, I was able to do DivCon. Lives were blessed. I was shocked of how God even used the entire conference to bless people. People gave their life to Christ. People are serving God to this day, and people are, are telling me that how they were so blessed by that conference. But imagine if I didn't go back to the place of intimacy with the Lord, and if I didn't go to this secret place to find out how I was even going to birth the vision. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. I don't know who needs to hear this podcast. I don't even know how you came on this episode right now, but... If this episode is speaking to you and you know that there's something sitting dormant on the inside of you and you know that maybe you've been holding on to a promise from the Lord for 10, 20, 30 years now and you're like, God, I'm starting to doubt what you've said. Where's the place that you even heard the promise to begin with? Many times it's not that we need a fresh word from the Lord or it's not that we need a new word or not that we need a prophet to come and tell us something, what we actually need to do is get back to the place of intimacy with the Lord. That's where everything changes. I'm even reminded in the Bible, somewhere in Exodus, you should read the whole book of Exodus because you'll be blessed, but it's either Exodus 30 or 33, something like, no, Exodus 33 verses 16. God was speaking to Moses, and Moses would tell God, if your presence doesn't go before us, we will not be set apart, because your presence is the only thing that sets us apart from everybody else on this earth. And I want to tell somebody right now that it's not necessarily that you need more word or need more promise in order to fulfill the previous promise. What it is, is that you actually need the presence of the Lord and you need a greater level of intimacy with the Lord in order to see what he has spoken over you. Mm. That blessed me, child. That blessed me. <laughs> I really hope that that speaks to someone today. If you want to leave with one thing from this podcast today, is just to go into a deeper realm of intimacy with God. I know your circumstances might tell you that you don't have to trust what he said. And I know it can be so hard to be obedient at times and so hard to want to just follow what he says because it's not easy and it's not supposed to be easy. But what makes it even just a bit easier is to know that the Holy Spirit is going before us is to know that there's a supernatural God that is bigger than us, that is bigger than the vision that he's even given us, that is leading and guiding us. But it's up to us to take the first step to even get into that place of intimacy with him. Amen. I hope this episode blessed you today. If it did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, okay? Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And I will see you next week. But before we leave, let's close in a little prayer. Father God, I thank you for this episode, Lord. I thank you that this episode has blessed somebody, has inspired somebody to want to go into deeper realms of intimacy with you, Lord. Father God, may it even cause somebody to pick up the word that they've dropped and pick up the seed that they've dropped and bring it back to your presence. Because in your presence, Lord, we are able to be transformed into who you have called us to be before we were even formed in our mother's womb. So, Father God, may your word take root and bring fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.